we are on part five of the homosexuality series, video 10. Can you believe it? Ah! Super cool. Um, and you're still watching. Props to you. Um, so last time we talked about the way that we are born this way. Um, homosexuals are born that way. We are born this way. Um, <clears throat> talked about a lot of things in Romans and Ephesians. <clears throat> and now we're really getting into the end stages of this conversation, of this topic. Um, don't look on anyone without love. Um, really, let me say that again. Don't look on anyone without love. Um, I remember I was talking to this one homosexual, and while they were talking, um, they knew I was a Christian, see, and out of nowhere they said something about them being gay, and they looked real quick to see what my response was, and this was my response. I, I was listening to them, and she was all talking, and I was like, yeah. Then she said that she was homosexual, and I said, oh, okay. And I didn't have any response, a negative response, like, like, oftentimes when you say that you're homosexual around a Christian, they'll get this look on their face. See that on the left there? Or maybe this one. Or maybe, ah, or maybe, like, me too. <laughs> um, uh, and because I didn't show disgust, which I really wasn't disgusted, but because I didn't show disgust, regardless of whether I was disgusted or not, she was, she trusted me, and she ended up going to church, and she ended up, you know, being changed. And I was able to have an impact on her that I wouldn't have had had I just written her off, you know. Um, we're told in the Bible that the two greatest commandments are to love God and to love people. If we really love people, we'll do things that First Corinthians uh, 13 said, talks about. We'll be patient, we'll be kind, we'll be all those other things. Because we love those people. The people, excuse us, excuse me, that God has called us to minister to. Um, uh, Jesus, Jesus ate with the sinners. Think about that. The Pharisees were the ones saying, saying to Jesus, Oh, you don't know what you're doing. If you knew who these people were, they're scumbags, they're, they're worthless. How many times are we as Christians doing the same thing? Oh, we can't hang out with those people. They're scumbags. They're worthless. They're the homosexuals. They're a problem. I, I'm perfect in my little bubble, and I don't need any help, but they need some serious help. You know, it, there's, there's, no, there's no difference in sin. Sin is sin, and sin will separate us from God. Sin will always separate us from God. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're told in the Bible that the people know us by our love. So compare that. Do people know Christians by their love, or do they know them by their by their hate, by their intolerance, by their condemnation? Think about this honestly. Don't just tune me off because I'm saying something that's that's not popular. Just think about this. Um, we need to be accepting of everyone who walks through the door, everyone who we see through the see in the street, everyone we meet, everyone we know. We need to be accepting um, of everyone in love as Christ did. Now, there should be discipline in the church. I already talked about that in the last video, about the way that we are supposed to be judging the actions of our Christian brother and sisters. But as far as the world and, and as far as people's heart, we're not supposed to be judging. And even, um, oftentimes, as soon as we convert someone, we hand them this pamphlet of, like, do's and don'ts, like a checklist, you know. Oh, well, don't do this because I don't like that. Don't do this because Jesus doesn't like this. And don't do this because, well, I just said don't do that. You know, we... That's not what people need to hear, and that's not how people are saved. Um, consider this. There's this. There was this girl uh, who came into a church that I went to before I before I moved, and uh, she w she was kind of an oddball. You know, she would do things like wear lingerie to church sometimes, which was kind of awkward. You know, you don't really know where to look. You know, as as a, as a teenager who's going through puberty, you don't really know where to look. It's like uh, you don't you don't want to look down because that just looks awkward. You don't want to look like this, because, you know, and then you don't want to look at, you don't want to make eye contact, because you're afraid that your eyes will wander down or something, and it's like, ah, you know? Um, 
and she used to cuss and do stuff like that, and she was not accepted at all. She was totally written off. Nobody talked to her. Nobody got to know her. Nobody spent any time with her at all. Nobody was doing what Jesus did. Nobody invited her out for lunch. Nobody went went walking for her. Nobody called her out of a tree. Nothing, you know. Um, instead, there was just this condemnation and judgment uh, over her, and that was all she received. And that church never had an impact on her, or any other people who were different. The only people they had an impact on were the people who came to the church looking for help. That was it. And people shouldn't have to come to the church looking for help. That's not how the church should operate. Um, so I say that again. Don't look on anyone without love. We need to be accepting of everyone and love as Christ did. Um, now, I'm ta not talking about just simply saying, love the sinner, hate the sin. And then as soon as you see the sinner, the sinner you're like, no, I'm talking about genuinely loving the people and realizing that their sin doesn't matter. What matters is that they are saved, that they that they change from from their ways, from the lust of the flesh, and 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 follow after Christ. That's what matters. Um, um, so it's no different than any sin. Uh, don't see others as different. Jesus ate with the sinners. You know, it, they're no different than we are. Um, his purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost. Is that our purpose? Are we trying to seek and to save that which was lost, or are we trying to to trying to still win an argument? You know, um, we are all called to abstain from lust of the flesh. All of us. That is the grounds of, of Christianity, communion, fellowship, love, abstaining from evil. These are the trademark benches of Christians. If we don't have that, then what makes us a Christian? By name? How can we have say that we have faith and not show it by our actions? James talks about this. Um, so to you perfect Christians out there who have everything under control, stop being so, so condemning and hateful, okay? You are only saved by God's grace. You deserved a, a second chance, but not them. You know, you're only saved by a thin layer of, God, of, the, of the blood of the Lamb, a thin layer of grace, and that's it. That's the only thing that separates you from the world. Y you by yourself are still worthless. You can't, you can't do anything to earn God's grace. You can't do anything to get yourself saved or... You can't. Um, so they deserve the same chance that you did. Be patient with them. Try to try to witness to them. Uh, to you Christians who are struggling with any sin, not just homosexuality, any sin, keep it up. Don't give up. You are running a race. Run well. Love others and abstain from fleshly lust. The Holy Spirit will help you with any of the, any of these any of these sins that just leech onto you. There is a hope. There really is believe that today there is a hope okay um, let me tell you my my testimony this video is going to run a little bit longer than the other ones but uh, when I got addicted to pornography when I was nine years old I had a serious problem with anger hated people was very violent uh, I was just not pleasant to be around um, and I was stuck in that for forever and when I was in it it seemed like that was all that I would ever be it seemed like I would never change the problems would never change it, I would never get over it, it was a part of who I was, that's who I, that's, that was who I was, you know, and you may say, oh, well, there's a difference between different sins, like, homosexuality is a mindset, well, so is the mindset that I had, really, there, different, different sins have different spins on them, and require different attention, and different, different techniques to get over, but they're all, at the root, they're all the same, they really are. Um, um, but yeah, just, just keep, keep, keep going, keep trying. I'm now 20 years old, I'm married, um, I don't struggle with those things anymore. I mean, I don't do those things anymore. I'm still, I still struggle with them, I'm still tempted, but I don't do, you know, and, and, and realize that there is a difference between being tempted to do something and actually doing it or thinking about it, you know, lusting after it. There is a difference. Um, so is homosexuality a sin? Yes, it is a sin. The Bible is abundantly clear on that. God sets the standards, not men, and it's our measuring bar. That's how we know uh, what's right and what's wrong. Um, we are not called as Christians to coexist. We are called to be set apart from this world. As Leviticus uh, says, uh, be holy for I am holy. Um, uh, we're called to love and, dis and disciple others. When G the Great Commission of, of, in Matthew um, we're, we're called to spread the gospel. 
how can we be spreading the gospel if we're not set apart from the world, if we're acting just like the world? And how can we spread the gospel if we're not living different, if we don't have love? How can we be any different if we don't show any difference? You know? Um, so really balance that. We're not supposed to be, con be condoning that, that lifestyle, but we're not supposed to be hating people either. Stop, stop trying to mystify homosexuality. It's just like any other sin. It's just like any other sin. Okay? And yes, it is bad, but no, the attitude that we Christians have is unacceptable. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this mini-series. I hope it was beneficial to you. God bless you, and stay tuned for more videos. This is the last video on homosexuality, um, and we all said, whew. Um, <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was enlightening. I hope it was encouraging. Um, before I close out this homosexuality, um, let me say this. Um, if you want some techniques, if you're a Christian who's struggling, really being tempted with homosexuality, um, here's some just some quick ideas. Number one, don't put yourself in a place where you're going to fail. You know, like, for instance, when I was on porn, don't stay at home with, the, with just you and the Internet. I mean, don't be tell them about it, you know what I'm saying? Same principle for, for homosexuality. Um, also, try to make friends of the same sex so that you can see and be able to to have the, the friends that you could potentially become attracted to, but know how, how, a, how a natural relationship should go. Um, the lust of the flesh is a slippery slope. You know, you see do male dogs mating with male dogs, you see you see different stuff like that going on. But nature shows, you know, you need a male and you need a female. And when they mate, a child is born. You know, it, the very order of things shows that. Um, remember, we're not, we're not animals. We're people. Um, just some, some ideas for you, for, you to, for you to think about. Also, don't isolate yourself from, from the church body. Stay in fellowship. Um... Try to see if there's someone, an elder in the church or someone who can counsel you and help you. Someone who you can trust and who won't write you off of the church. Um, also, make friends with opposite sex, too. I know sometimes homosexuals can get this idea that, that they're just afraid of all straight people. And I understand that. Really, I do. There's a lot of hate going on. But if you make friends with them, and you know you can establish that friendship and, and it will really help you, help you get past that that fear and that ostracism for whatever that's worth I hope that that helps those are just some ground some ground rules um, really uh, some time in prayer some time in worship some time in just studying the Bible uh, pursuing after God and God will show you things you know um, uh, it, God God has a way of speaking to you through through the things that you're struggling with um, I'll stop there. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching these and for the support. I really hope you enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Um, and I hope that is is how Christians start acting. You know. God bless.